Um, we are backstage now with Danny Bryant and uh, in, in Zoetermeer as he's preparing for his gig. Uh, people can hear Flavium in the background. John Prime is going on stage, but Danny's on stage. Danny, first of all, your new album, Just As I Am, you finished it uh, and brought it in, in, yeah, this year on the market. How how does it go now, two months into the release? It's going really good. It's been our most successful album so far um, in terms of, of sales and uh, reviews and, and basically the way people have reacted to it has been very encouraging. Um, the songs are, are fun to play live, so it's been it's been a good experience so far. Is it different than your first six recordings? Um, so it's the recording process, uh, the writing, the playing? Well, the recording process was the same. I used the same studio as we did the previous album, Black and White, which is an analog studio, so there's no digital technology involved. It's kind of done the old way. But I took more time in, in writing this album. And um, I, I normally... I, I can't start writing until I know the studio is booked. It's kind of a mental thing for me. But I started in, in January of um, 2009 and we recorded in September. So I wrote about 15 to 20 songs and then I cut out the ones, uh, not necessarily that weren't as good, but that didn't fit. I wanted it to have a more of a theme. So it, um, it remained interesting rather than just all guitar or all, you know, so I wanted it to be a bit of a barrier. The theme of the CD, what, how do you uh, describe it by your own words? Because the, if I see the lyrics and the, the titles there, you, you, have, you must be a, a very unlucky boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. It's just, um, well, the whole, the whole title track is, you know, I've been doing this, I'm, a, I'm 29, but I've been doing it for my, for my living, for my job for 10, 11 years now. And, and I really appreciate the people that come to see us play. But what you see is what you get, you know, I, I, I give my best every night, but it is just as I am, you know, I'm not going to become a, a jazz musician or, or go into pop or something, I, I love doing what I do, and that's what that, you know, a lot of people uh, think that song's like just as I am is like of about a, a broken heart or something, but it isn't, it's basically saying, you know, I'm, I'm just as I am and I, I hope you like it and accept it, and if you don't, you know. The blue collar blues. Put, put your sleeves up and go to work. Yep, yep. Roll your sleeves up. The sky is full And there's danger in the air Hear that tone, bell ring going to write them do they come easy or is it a struggle the best ones come easy usually the best ones are easy they're they're they're, they're inspired like anything in life um they're almost they're almost given to you you know they're they're like they were an idea that must have been forming in the back of your head without you knowing about it and then suddenly they come out they're the best songs um there's certain songs that you you work on because if i look at an album and i think the first, for example, on this album, there's like Shut Out the Light is the first song, which is like a, a riff. I wanted a riff for the first song and also something in the UK that could get us on radio that isn't too long. Second song is the tribute to Buddy Guy. So then you think, I need a ballad. So in that sense, you might specifically write a song to fit into that niche. So the way you produce the CD, uh, we can imagine that the eighth CD is uh, equally produced. <laughs> a riff, a ballad, a song. <laughs> well, no, I have to think of something different next time, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise it's obvious. No, next time I'm going to start with a 12-minute slow blues, and no, no, I don't know. I haven't thought of that one yet. The next one. Um, 
um, do you have any help of your uh, obvious the, the drummer or the, the bass the guitar your dad in the studio uh, to finish the songs or do you have mostly completely recorded or in your head this the way I'm gonna do it and you're gonna play it well I write them um, which takes a little while and uh, I write them down at home Ru I have like a four track record I roughly record them just horrible demos you know that only I can understand like a sketch you know um, then we go to a small studio for a week um, and we stay there. It's like we treat it as fun, like a rehearsal. Just the three of us go off. It's a much smaller studio than the one we're recording. It's, it's digital. We stay in a hotel. We have good fun. We go out at night and party and have a good time. In the day, we just record rough, rough sketches of the songs. The, the record button's going all the time. So, you know, I've got recordings at home. I'm saying, you know, don't play that or perhaps we try. And everybody takes them home. And we usually listen for between two weeks and a month before we go into the main studio. So then everybody can bring what they, they feel they need to bring to those songs. They, they bring them in, into it. So uh, in that sense, yeah. I mean, I, I write the songs and I have the arrangement in my head. But if anybody comes up with anything... I listened to them and then do what I wanted to do in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you write your arrangements down? Because no. if you do, you know the, the chord scheme and or all that that stuff. No, all I do. I mean, I write the chords. You know, like you know, we got a C and a G and an A minor to remember it. And then if I come up with like, I can write like guitar tablature. Just, but it would only be me that understands it. But that's all it needs to be to remember. And sometimes, you know, I get Kirby with with the camera just to film what I'm playing, and then I can put it on the PC and look back and see what I've done, just to remind me. You know, they're literally just things to remind me what I've written. And then I have a folder with all the lyrics, and then we go in with about 15 songs for the pre what we call pre-production. We record them all, and I throw the songs out that aren't as good. I you sell thought on the guitar? Or you had a yeah. yeah, just um, what I try and do is, is just play with emotion all the time. You know, I'm not very technical. <laughs> we're going to do is is the DVD which I hope to do in February of next year we've never done a DVD before so in Holland we're going to do it in Holland yeah this is my favorite place you know uh, we did the live album in England and now a lot of English people have said they want to come over and see us in Holland I say it's great you know you got to come over so we're going to do it we're going to do it in Holland and and uh, make a make a big thing of it you know so. do you have a venue uh, in thought it, um, in your mind? Yeah, I'm going to do it um, at uh, Ross Marlin, where we do that. I'm doing the Blues Night there in October, but we're going to hopefully do a gig there next year because it's a great venue, but also um, upstairs you can you can film up in the... There's like a window up there in the dressing room. They can pull that out, so it's like a balcony, so I can get the guys filming up there, and that. so I think we're going to do it there. You have thought it through. How was Europe reacting? Uh, the, the other parts of Europe, Germany, for instance, or Belgium, France? It's going good. It's good. Uh, Germany, we've only been going in there the last couple of years and it's become quite exciting. You know, we're still new there, but it's nice to go to shows and see new people coming out every night. So it's it's exciting. And actually, uh, Switzerland has become really good, really quite quickly. We did some good festivals there and we've, we've got a good agency. and So that's that's good. 